Welcome back to The Modern Ham. Today I just wanted to give a brief introduction to the FTM6000R. I recently purchased this radio for packet use. I just figured it would maybe benefit someone if I give an introduction to what the radio does, what it's about, and some of the menu settings. And we're also going to program a repeater in this thing. The FTM6000R, it is a 50 watt dual band, 2 meter, 70 centimeter radio, but it shines because it has 9600 baud data jack on the back for packet capability. That's the reason I bought it. And I would imagine it's probably the reason that a lot of people are probably purchasing this radio instead of some of the other EAC radios out there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the radio itself and see the components on it. And then we'll dig into the menu and I'll show you guys how to program repeaters and navigate the menus and what they all do. So let's go ahead and take a look at the radio. Things are pretty straightforward here. You just have your regular 259 um, antenna connection. We have a fan, the power adapter, but we also have this external speaker jack and we have this data jack. Um, we actually have two external speaker jacks, which I didn't really know until looking at it, but that's, that's kind of interesting. But the data jack is what I'm going to be using the most. This is where you can get your 9600 baud out. But looking on the front uh, with most mobile radios, obviously you have your removable faceplate. So you can, you know, disconnect that and you can run longer cables and run that through your vehicle however you'd like to do that. In terms of the outside, things are pretty straightforward as any of these mobile radios. But let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. So we can turn it on by uh, holding in the power button, obviously. And if you're not familiar, most of these radios have a channel mode and then they have a frequency mode. And you can swap between that with the VM or MW key down here in the bottom. So this right here is kind of free range frequency. You can change the dial to whatever frequency you'd like. And if you hit that VM button again, it's going to change you over to the channel mode. Uh, so if you have memories programmed in, you'll be able to use the knob now to navigate those memories uh, and change to different uh, channels. Now over here you have a volume knob. So obviously uh, this would affect your volume. And we also have a squelch control. So if you tap this squelch button once, uh, and if you don't know squelch is just how much noise, how much signal is needed to actually turn on the receiver or the speaker of your radio. So if I change that to zero, for example, if I go to squelch and change it to zero, then we have radio static. Let's go ahead and take a look at the menu settings for this radio. So there's two different types of menus on this radio. If you just tap this F key, you're gonna go into a quick menu. If you hold it in, you're gonna go into the full menu. Now, the thing is, with the, the quirk of this radio is you can actually take menu items from the full menu and store it into the quick menu. That way you don't have to sort through as many items. Uh, so first, I'm going to hold in this F key, and that's going to take me to the wider menu. And this number here indicates the, the menu option. So let's go ahead and just go through these really quickly. Uh, menu option one is the auto power off. So if you leave your radio unattended, do you want your radio to be powered off? And I'm just going to go through the ones that are really uh, useful or what people may take a look at. The menu option five is the beep level. I don't know about you guys, but I hate beeping on the radio when I hit buttons, so I'll always turn this off. Next thing you might want to take a look at is your microphone gain. So in menu option 13, if someone tells you that you're being really quiet, you can actually go in here and uh, change this to high for the microphone gain. Uh, I've never had to, to do that, but that is an option. Another option you might want to take a look at is menu option 16. So if you are using this for packet, you'll typically just want this set to 9600 baud um, because if you have it set to 9600, it's going to be able to do anything below as well. So now this would be a good option to ex time to explain the menus, uh, the diff two different menus, because uh, it's going to become relevant here. So most of the menus that I change, I have it in the quick menu. So if I just tap F, I see that I see squelch type, I see squelch code. I also see uh, repeater offsets. Um, and those are the, almost all the settings that you need to program a repeater. Well, how did I get those into that quick setting? Well, let me show you. I'm gonna hit back to take us back to whatever menu you were on originally. Let's say that I want to be able to change the step from the quick menu. Well, first I'm going to go to where that's located in the full menu. So I hold in the F key and I see step here. I'm going to hold in the F key now. And now 
it is in my quick menu. So let's see what that looks like. I'll hit the back button. Now I'm going to tap the F key and you'll see now step is in my quick menu. It still says it's option 27, um, but is now in my quick menu. So now I can actually go in and change that without going into the full 30 something item menu. Now, if I wanted to get that back out again, I can tap the F key, navigate to where it's at in the quick menu. And all I have to do is hold in the squelch back key. And that's going to kick it out of the uh, quick menu. So now, whenever I tap that F key, it's no longer there. And you'll see that if I hold in the F key, uh, it's back over in the full menu, which you should know if you take things out of the full menu like this, you'll see lines across like this right here once you go to that menu. That means they're in your quick menu, so they no longer exist in the full menu. So I hope that was simple enough. And that's kind of how you navigate the, the menus. So let's go ahead and let's program a repeater. So there's a repeater in my area, 146.865. I'm going to go to the VM key, and I'm going to tap it to go to frequency mode. Now, I want to program the receive frequency first, so I'm going to do 146.865. Well, I accidentally punched that in. We'll use that as an example. So 146.655, this is be the, the receive frequency that you have. The next thing you want to do is go over to your, um, your quick menu if you have it there, or whatever menu option 20 is, and it says repeater set. Now, if you go into this menu, you can either do a plus offset or a minus offset. In my case, I'm going to use the minus. So you'll see the minus is up there now. The next thing I want to do is maybe I want to set a tone. So I'll go to menu option. Let's do, um, well, let's do menu option 24, squelch type. So for a tone, we want to have a tone encoding, which means we send the tone to the repeater. And tone squelch means we send the tone to the repeater. And we also don't want to open our squelch unless that tone comes back. So uh, I'm hitting the F key here to go to the quick menu, menu option 24, tone squelch. I'm going to tap this here to put that in. So now that I have tone squelch and I have that negative offset, the next thing I want to do is actually set the tone that I'm using. So now we go to menu option 25, squelch code. And let's say I want 100. Let's go down to 100 and I hit this button here. And now we have a basically what would be a repeater plugged in. So if I were to key this up, you'll see the offset change there. And we're also doing the 100 hertz tone. So this would work and you would be able to talk on this repeater if this is the one that you were plugging in. How do we store this in memory? Well, that's not too difficult. All we have to do is just hold in this VM key. And then it's going to uh, pop up the channel. And we're going to select a free channel to plug it into. Let's say channel 6. I'm going to go ahead and hold this in again. And now, we're already in channel mode again. If you, if you want to go back to VFO, you can hit this and change the frequency. But hit this to go to channel. You'll see that now in channel 6, right? So just like with the other channels, now we go up to channel 6. This is the repeater that we just plugged in. The, uh, this would be programmed into your radio now as channel 6. Now say you want to give it a fancy name. Say this is a, um, a repeater in your local area, right? I'm going to hold in the VM key on the channel. And then I'm going to rotate this knob to go from copy over to name. Then I'm going to press the knob in. And now I'm going to type in a name by rotating this here. And I'm just going to type in high. I press it in when I got the letter that I want. Right? And once you're done, you're going to hold in that VM key once more. And now channel 6, instead of it showing the frequency, it's going to show high. But it's still that... Um, the frequency that we just plugged in for the repeater. So now if I navigate my channels and I have one called Simplex and IL2P and things like that, if we go to channel six, the repeater that we plugged in, it has the tone squelch, it has the offset, uh, and it's also named high and we can use it just as we would any other repeater. So that's how you plug in repeaters and name the channel. And that basically covers mostly the basic operations of the radio. Of course, you can go in more advanced if you'd like. 
but I just wanted to show the basic operations that most people would do day to day. I hope that was a nice straightforward rundown of the radio if maybe if you're thinking about purchasing it or if you just purchased it and you're trying to figure out how to program it. I hope that this was enough to kind of get you started and get you in and, and get programming repeaters and things like that. So thank you guys so much for watching. 73 to you.